Faults routinely happen on the overhead distribution system, and there's a number of causes. It can be tree limbs, it can be lightning, it can be uh, animals. And, and those faults uh, you know, cause a short between the, the medium voltage conductor and ground. If you only have a fuse as a protective device and you have a temporary fault, the fuse will blow and it'll cause what's known as a sustained outage. Those customers are out until a, a utility truck comes and replaces the fuse. With a reclosing device, when there's a temporary fault, the reclosing device will, will open the circuit and, and de-energize the circuit for a few seconds, clear the fault, and then it'll reclose automatically and restore service to all the customers and there's no need for a truck roll. So the way the circuits are laid out, when you have the breaker at the substation with reclosing capabilities and a, a backbone of the feeder and all of the laterals and taps are protected by fuses, what happens is on the backbone you get the benefits of reclosing where you can quickly open the circuit and reclose to clear temporary faults. But you lose that on the laterals because the fuse will blow and isolate that fault, even if it's a temporary fault, and cause a sustained outage. So the utility engineers many, many years ago came up with a concept that they called fuse saving. And so what they did is they set the breaker at the substation with one cycle of tripping and reclosing that was very fast. And it was so fast that they actually operated before the fuse could blow. And so if there was a fault beyond a fuse, the operation would quickly open the circuit so quickly the fuse wouldn't have time to blow and then reclose and hopefully clear that temporary fault. If it was a permanent fault like a, a car hitting a pole or a, a tree falling on the line, then the fuse would have an opportunity to blow and isolate that tap. That was a very successful strategy and it was used for many years by a number of utilities. But starting in the 1980s we had VCRs with digital clocks and customers would come home and that clock would be blinking and that was an indication that there had been a fault and they would call the utility and they started complaining. Uh, these momentary interruptions which were never a problem in the past all of a sudden became a problem and because of those complaints many utilities started rethinking the use of fuse saving. So to understand this better in 2016 EPRI created a survey amongst our members to ask them whether they use fuse saving presently or they use the opposite which is called fuse sacrifice. And what we got back was about 50% use fuse saving and about 50% use fuse sacrifice and a very small number adaptively switched between the two. And this research project is to explore that. So there's two levels of adapting that we think we can implement. The first level is inside of the relay itself, in the substation or on the recloser pole itself, where we can change the firmware in that device so that it monitors the fault current level, makes a different decision whether it's a low fault current or high fault current fault, and then uh, does that locally all by itself. And then we think there is a larger, higher level decision making that we can implement at the control center in the distribution management system where we're monitoring local weather conditions and adaptively changing from fuse saving to fuse sacrifice based on those local weather conditions. At the end of this process, which will occur towards the end of 2017, we'll have analyzed a lot of data and we'll have identified the correlations. And what we're going to give the utilities are the key correlating factors and the criteria for when fuse saving should be implemented and when it should be off or when we should be in fuse sacrifice mode. And that's going to allow these utilities to get all the benefit with very little of the, of the adverse effects. We're going to prevent truck rolls, we're going to save money, and we're going to improve reliability and the entire customer experience.